Hello and welcome to the 33rd video in this tutorial series of programming in C. In this video we're going to carry on with the very bare bones and simple tic-tac-toe game we've been developing. Before I start getting into the video, please make sure you've understood, and I'm sorry to labour the point, but how that we've got 25 squares for our internal board with the squares that you see for the actual game on these nine squares here. And in this convert to 25 here, we can enter a 0 to 8 for our game, representing our game the nine game squares in this fashion to get the relevant square then on the internal board because that's important in the upcoming video. So in this video we're going to implement this get move from human function and I've already written a function so I'm going to do some copy and pasting and explaining to keep the length of the video down a bit. So the function itself is defined simply as get human move and returns an integer which will be the move and it returns the integer as an internal board uh, index. So if the move was placed at the top left hand square of the board where this naught is here, it will be returning 6 as the internal move. And now inside the get human move, we need to, much as we did for the fgets tutorial, make an array of characters. We'll have four characters here, although the move itself should be two characters long because they'll enter what the human should enter a 1 to a 9 plus the enter key. And the whole passing of the user move is based around this while loop. And this while loop keeps running until move OK is no longer zero. And what we're going to do is use fgets to get the input from the user. And then we're going to validate this input for all the things we can think of where the user may have tried to break our program and enter illegal input. So we ask for a move from 1 to 9. We take in three characters in user input and then we make a call to f flush std in and I'll come back to this and explain what it is in a short while. So now we have our user input, the first thing we can do is ask here, and I'm going through this quite fast because we've all seen this before in the previous tutorial videos and it's not very difficult, it's more the principles of why. We say if the string length of what the user's entered is not equal to 2, then we'll carry on and ask for some more input by calling the continue because entering a 1 to a 9 plus the enter would give us a string length in our input of 2. So if the string length isn't 2 then the user's done something else, entered more characters or less characters than they should have done and the input therefore is invalid. But once we've got some valid input the user may have done some tricks to make sure to enter a couple of numbers side by side say or letters and not had to press the enter key to send the input to fgets. So we use scanf to try and format our string according to what's specified inside the speech marks. So for example, if you're entering a date, you could say have this as the format specifier. And then you would store these three integers at the address here of three integer variables. Obviously they wouldn't all have the same name. They would be different integer variables. And scanf then returns the number of variables it's managed to store at these addresses from the format you specified. So if it managed to say you actually entered a number slash a number space a number, then it would manage to pass these two numbers here and would return the result of two. So in our format specifier we've got just one number to pass, we've got one address to store it at, which is the address of our move integer. So if it doesn't return a one then it's not managed to pass our number, so letters were entered or hash keys or something like this, but certainly not a number, and therefore we reset move to minus one. Nothing should have been stored in here if it failed, but just in case I'll put it back to minus one and say that it was invalid and go around and ask for some input again. So by now we know that we've stored an integer in move, so now we have to test that the integer is actually in the correct range of our moves, one to nine. If it's not, again we continue and ask for some more input. And otherwise it looks like the move is successful but the user has entered the move on a 1 to 9 basis and in this array up here we need it on a 0 to 8 basis to be able to use this convert array to get our internal board index. So the way we deal with that is we decrement move by 1 to get 0 indexing and now we simply have to ask is at the square on the internal board using convert to 25 here is the board empty at that position? Because if it isn't, then there's already a naught or a cross there, 
and the human can't place their naught on this square. So we have to say the square isn't available and again continue. But if it is available, then the move is legal and we can set move OK equal to 1, which will cause the while loop to end. And the last thing then we have to do at the bottom is simply print that we're making the move and in fact we can, why not print the actual number of the move that was entered by the human and return the internal, remember, indexed move. So let's go back up to this F flush and find out what we're doing here and why. Say the user entered a load of rubbish strings like this. And what would happen here is F gets would take in the first three characters into user input. We would already fail here with invalid string length. But then the while loop would come again and F gets would take these three characters and we'd fail with invalid string length. And then we'd take these three characters, two, three, and so on. And if we were really unlucky and we had a string like this, we'd be left with a six and an enter. And it would then pass this saying, well, actually, that's a legal move and return that the human wanted to make a six. When in fact, what that happened was the human entered a load of, a load of old rubbish and they didn't actually enter a, a one to nine and then press the enter key. So what you can do, I just undo what I've deleted here. So what you can do is you can call something called flush on a stream and it's very much like a toilet basically. F gets takes the first three and then F flush basically gets rid of all the others out of this stream. In this case the standard input and the, the characters are gone. So next time the while loop comes round F gets has to sit and wait for input because there isn't any waiting in the standard input. So I hope that's clear as to why we're using the F flush there. So I'll just save that now and I'll go down into here and we'll just have a quick look at how the function works. I'm sure you can imagine and it's not really very difficult. We'll just compile the program and run. And now it says please enter a move from 1 to 9. So let's enter some rubbish and it fails and asks again. Let's enter 0. It fails and asks again. Let's enter 11. It fails. Let's enter a big number. Good. It looks like let's just hit enter on its own. Good. So all the combinations of messing around and trying to cause problems aren't working. So now it's enter something legal like a 4. It says making move four, and the program ends because it's breaking out due to game over being equal to one here of the while loop. Okay, so that's it then for this video. Next video will implement the getting the move from the computer part of the program. Thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.